Hello. We are here at Project Home. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, we have you. Jason? Yes. Hi. <laughs> My name is Susie. I'm on the uh, Nuclear's Library Board. Um, no one from the library staff could host the meeting tonight, so I offered to volunteer. Um, and I hope I'm doing this correctly. I see that we have participants. I've been letting people in. Uh, Jason. Hafeman is here from Project Home to conduct the seminar. Jason, are you are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? You should be able to hear me. Can you hear me? Hello? I can hear you. Jason? Hello. Yes. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear us now on this setup? You can't. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Hang on one second. Yes, Jason, that is correct. We can't hear you. Oh, Shelly can hear both of us. I can't hear you, but. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not sure why you can't hear us, but yeah, we are, should be set up. Can everybody else hear us at Project Home? Choppy in and out. Okay, fair enough. I can make an adjustment with the sound. And yeah, it, sh it was working beautifully just before when I tested it. So such is life. Oh, it's better now? Okay. I want to make sure you can all hear us. So, 
Um, yeah, we spent a while setting all the the camera up so we can give you a really good, okay, give you a really good look at what's taking place and try to bring the class ac across to you the best we can. Um, so we're able to use like a video camera and interface that in through the laptop and the Zoom. So uh, it allows us to do a lot more and give you close-up looks at, at things that our, our instructor's doing tonight and stuff like that. So if, if everybody can hear us, then I'm going to go with this setup and assume it's good. Okay, hey everyone, I'm Jason Haithman. I'm the Outreach Manager here at Project Home. Uh, we have a class for you tonight about drywall and Brian Ott, who's worked here quite a long time and one of our uh, experts in the field is going to give you some pointers about repairing drywall, some installation tips, stuff like that. Uh, I just wanted to say that we have a lot of programs that we operate in the area, both in Dane County and Greene County, so if people need home repairs, accessibility modifications, energy efficiency work. That's the kind of stuff that we do. Um, there are a number of programs for it. There are different services that we provide. And, and so if you or someone you know might need some help with those things on their home, please reach out to us. Um, there are a variety of programs we can help you with and we'd be happy to do that. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to let you all know is that we will have a, a really fun virtual event uh, next month, it's October 14th. It's free and open to the public. It's online trivia. We're also having an online auction with that. And all the people that participate can help us raise money just by participating and helping answer questions for the trivia. So I invite you to join us on Thursday night, October 14th. Uh, just head to our website. There will be a link right there to join the event and have some fun with us on October 14th. So, that's all I want to say for now. Without further ado, I will turn things over to Brian. I'm going to get behind the camera. And if you have questions, you can put them in the chat. Um, I'll monitor that kind of as we go too. So thanks so much for checking out our class tonight. OK, welcome. Uh, thanks for having us. I guess my on the camera here or you got to adjust a there little bit go, okay right. yep welcome thanks for joining us tonight i guess tonight we've got some drywall repairs uh some tips and tricks uh just kind of simple little things there as far as that would go um simple install ideas and um we'll kind of go through a little bit of the tools that we use and um, the simplest things that you can do to to kind of fix those little holes behind the door that the doorknob hit or moving pictures around and got a little carried away with a hammer. So I guess don't be afraid, it's only drywall. Uh, nothing else you can really do with it. So um, just have fun with it. I guess patience and the more you play with it, the better it is. So I guess some of our, um, I'll wait for Jason. Yep, okay. Um, I guess initially some of our stuff right away, um, some of the simple tools that we made need use as far as uh, drywall install goes uh, you got an assortment of hand tools you know you can use simple things as far as screwdrivers uh, power drills any type of corded or um, battery operated we've got a gauntlet of different drywall knives that you can use um, inside corners there's simple little one inch knives and then I guess you can kind of get into some more of your six inch and then a bigger like 12 inch finishing knife. Uh, I guess for demonstration purposes, I've got just a simple little, um, I guess mud pan that I'm gonna use tonight as opposed to uh, the larger hock that you can actually use. It's just easier to set this down on the table than the hock. Um, but the hock itself is a larger 
larger square, it's got a handle underneath, and you can put all your drywall joint compound on top of that once you get to finishing. Uh, some of the other stuff that we use, any type of shears or um, like a tin snips, and that comes in handy when you are cutting any of your corner beads. Uh, straight edges, we've got the big 48 inch T-square that helps you kind of lay out any of your drywall once you're doing a new install. Uh, this comes in really handy as far as that goes. Obviously we've got tape measure, and then some of our knives, you know, we got just a couple, like a razor knife, a uh, simple utility knife, and then we've got a drywall, um, drywall knife as far as cutting and scoring. Uh, one thing with your knives, keep them sharp. You know, a dull knife is more dangerous uh, than a sharp knife, especially when you're cutting through paper, uh, cutting out drywall. So it's going to cut easier, uh, cleaner cut. So keep the blades nice and sharp, uh, switch them out. You know, they don't cost that much as far as that goes. Um, some of our joint compound, there's a lightweight, um, an all-purpose, and they're usually designated as far as like the blue with the lightweight, uh, green is gonna be your all-purpose. Uh, your all-purpose is gonna dry harder um, and probably a little bit quicker as far as that goes. Your lightweight is gonna be easy to use. Uh, if you've got small projects, just a quick little repair, you know, you can go that route. And then we also have a powder mix that you can get and these actually come in uh, five minute 20 minute 45 minute 90 minute so the bag always is going to give the designation of what that is uh, usually with this that works really well if you are using a mesh uh, it's going to harden faster and be self-conscious um, if you get a 20 minute and you're a beginner it's going to set up really quickly so if you have just a small little patch to do, you're probably fine. Otherwise, just be on the safe side and get a 45 minute. Uh, pros and cons with these, I guess if you have the pre-mix, that's nice, that's easy. Um, get through the job, you don't have to worry about, you know, mixing the consistency as, as far as uh, getting your joint compound ready. If you only have little projects and you're gonna span them out, or, you know, you just wanna have some on hand, that's where the dry would come in handy. You know, you could get a, a bag of the 45, uh, they're probably seven, eight bucks for the bag and it's gonna last you for quite a while if you keep it in a cool, dry place. So uh, I usually have a mixture of each of them depending on what we're doing. Uh, some of our tapes, we got a normal just paper tape. Uh, this actually comes with kind of a seam already creased in it. So that way, if you're doing any corners, you can use this as well for the corners. And then we have a mesh tape, and I'll see if I can pull the edge here quick if I can find it. Uh, so the mesh tape works really well. Uh, one thing with the mesh tape, if you do use this, use your dry, it's going to set up, it's going to harden faster, uh, be a better product with your mesh. So uh, the other things that we have, drywall, um, you can get four by eight sheets, obviously inside, you know, we just brought a smaller sheet just for easy purposes. Uh, Four by eight sheet of half inch is going to run you between seven and eight bucks, you know, starting off at most uh, big box stores if you go there. Uh, know what you're going to, know your intent of what you want to purchase and what you're going to get. Uh, they do have, you know, real thin stuff uh, starting at quarter inch, three eighths, half inch, and then five eighths. If you're going to hang it, the half inch is going to get you your 16 inch on center as far as like your stud spacing would go, 5 eighths is gonna get you your 24 inch on center. Uh, also keep in mind where it's going. If you have any moisture concerns, they do have a high moisture resistant board. That's gonna be better suited for that area. And there's also fire rated. So if you're doing any work on like a garage or an adjacent wall with your house, make sure you get that fire rated. It's gonna be a 5 eighths. It's gonna give you, and it'll be stamped right on there as far as your fire rating goes. So. Just keep that in mind. You know, know your application of what you're what you're looking for. Um, and then, as far as the tapes, a couple of the other ones we do have an outside corner. We've got inside corners. Uh, these have, I guess, just kind of a little metal um, piece that's already inset with the tape face as well. Uh, there's many different styles, 
shapes. Uh, you can get some that are offset. You know, if you've got a, a 45 degree angle, as far as that goes, uh, you can get the offset ones. They do have others that are more of a, I guess a plastic vinyl. And there you can actually get a spray on adhesive and then just attach it right to it. So many different options on that. Uh, I guess, you know, whatever you get used to, you know, don't be afraid to stick with something that you're familiar with. If you're trying something out new, you know, hey, experiment. You know, that's, that's kind of the fun way of learning and getting into some of the new stuff that you have. Uh, once we get everything basically installed, you know, seams are taped, uh, all that fun stuff. There is a couple of different things, sanding wise. I guess I've got just a small little sanding block that I have for tonight. You can actually get larger ones um, with sandpaper and grit that you could actually put on a longer stick per se. Uh, and that way it can help you get up to your eight foot ceilings. Uh, same way with across the ceiling. That way you don't have to get on a ladder or stilts in order to do any of the sanding. You know, some of the simple sandpapers, uh, there's different grits on that. And then once you get down to actually finishing it off, uh, there's different textures that you can do. You can roll paint on, you know, your primer, your paint, keep it nice and smooth if you want. Always there's a sand texture that you can install. Um, you can get this mixed right in with your paint if you want, or you can get a small bag. I usually always carry one of these with me just so if we come to a repair, it's already had sand texture. Now I have some I can just mix it with my primer, roll it on, and I'm good to go. And then there's the spray textures. Uh, so there's different stiff, different kinds of spray textures. These basically once you get your wall done, your patches you know taken care of, everything sanded smooth. Now you can basically adjust this. Uh, try it out on a separate piece of drywall first, just so you don't go right up to your wall and now it's coming out goofy and uh, the first little dab you know doesn't give you a full true. Uh, so once you spray it for a couple seconds, then it gets to be true. So uh, go in a circular motion with it, and it kind of helps blend and uh, put everything back together. Uh, if you got any of your any of your uh, textures on that stuff, so um, I guess a couple other things that we do have that I use. If you're going to level off something, you know we've got a little simple two foot level. Uh, you can get grab a four foot level if you need, depending on your project and what you're looking at. You know if you just need to square off a small hole, this works really nice. And then if you get more advanced as far as installing, uh, they do have a Dremel or I guess a rotary saw, which basically has a small blade on it. And that's going to work really well for sipping uh, out any can light fixtures that might be there, any um, outlets that would be on the wall. So once you hang your drywall before it's fully ad adhered, you can go through and zip out your outlet and now it's going to fit nice and tight because those usually uh, stick out just a hair from your framing so I guess that's kind of the next step if you get into larger larger projects um, I guess a couple other things that we have um, you know I guess underneath of us tonight we've got some drop claws there are some simple little thin uh, three mil four mil poly that you can put down if you do know that you're going to have an area uh, tape stuff off you can get Larger six mil if you want to, and just kind of tape that down into an area underneath you. It helps with the cleanup. Uh, once you're done, you start rolling everything up instead of having to go back through and vacuum or uh, wet wipe a hardwood floor or anything like that. So these come in really handy, um, pretty cheap. So um, I guess as far as that goes, that's kind of some of the basics as far as our tools, uh, materials that we use on the job. So uh, the next part that we're going to do is kind of just step into our little display and some of the items that we have. So I've got a little mock up here. Uh, there's a few different areas. Uh, there's usually like a small, a medium, and then a large hole. It's kind of how you can grade them. Uh, small holes are going to be something that's going to be more like an inch and a half, two inch, as far as diameter. Um, you know, something you might be able to stick your finger through. That's going to give me a small hole. Those, uh, there's a couple different things that you can do. They actually have small little repair kits. If that's all you're worried about and you want something quick, simple, uh, those are going to be 10 bucks or less, depending on what you want. Uh, a lot of them have just a little fiber mesh uh, with a metal mesh backing on them. 
You can get like a four by four or six by six as far as anything like that. Put it on there. Um, it's got comes with its own joint compound, its own usually one inch knife, and then it's basically just sand it down, put on your second coat, sand it to your liking. You know, if you need a third coat, you know, go for it. Uh, especially for beginners, you know, take your time. Uh, less is more. So the less that you put on for your first couple coats, the less that you're sanding, the less ridges and bumps and everything else that you have to try to get back out of it. So try and keep it nice and smooth. Um, our medium holes are going to be anything a little bit bigger than, you know, these little two inch. Uh, so we've got one here that we were hanging up a picture and got carried away with a hammer kind of a deal. So, or somebody was playing baseball in the house and missed the glove and hit the wall. So, uh, these ones I'm going to demonstrate. Um, I'm actually going to do what they call as a California patch. So that's pretty cool. Uh, something fun. You know, you can try it at home. Uh, it'll be something new for a lot of people. So, you know, kind of keep, keep an eye on that one. And then we'll work on like an outside corner and then we've got a larger patch as well. So I guess with this one, um, being that I don't have the simple little patches today, basically I'm going to just use my mesh tape put it on there. And like I said before, mesh tape, we would usually use the dry compound and mix that. Today, just for convenient purposes, I'm just gonna use the joint compounds and start to pre-mix. So I'm just gonna grab some of that real quick and we can... So, um, like I said, we got our different tapes. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to use my joint, com uh, joint compound. I'm going to use my mesh. Works really well. Um, kind of just mark it off where you need to. Cut it. The one nice thing about the mesh is it does adhere. It's got a little stickiness to it. So you can actually put that right on. Applies nicely. Um, kind of holds its place so you don't have to mess around with that too much. Uh, the joint compound, make sure you got it nice and smooth. Um, a new tote, not too much of an issue. If you go to a tote that you've already opened, if there's any dry, crusty stuff on the top of it, scrape that off. Uh, the thin little inch that you might take off of it is gonna be well worth it because once you get those dry, crusty pieces in there, once you start working it, it's just gonna smear and then you got streaks that come through. So, so here, uh, Basically, you can just you know, like that. I'll try to stay out of the way here, and, and I can work my inside to my outside. So that's pretty simple as far as that goes. Uh, nice and easy. Uh, you can still kind of see the fiber mesh a little bit through there. Uh, like I said, with the uh, dry compound, that's going to be a little bit thicker as far as your initial coat goes. Uh, not a problem. We'll sand that down once it dries, put another coat on it, and we should be good to go. So that's going to be simple, easy. Um, same way with um, any of our smaller ones, our nails, screws. Um, if you have one that just broke the surface, uh, that's going to be simple enough where you might not even need anything on the back side of it. Uh, keep in mind, drywall is basically just a compressed material inside of a sheet. So if it, if it dents in, it basically just dented in on the back side. So if you've got a dent here and you're not worried about it, you know, getting pushed back in, you can surface, surface coat that uh, similar to this one right here. So I will basically put that on there, get my nails here. And then those are taken care of as far as that goes. So. Small holes, pretty simple, pretty easy. You know, play with it. You know, if you are worried, nervous, uh, grab a random piece and just, you know, start playing with it. It's not much that you can mess up with this. Uh, like I said, if you've got too much on there, you just spend a little extra time sanding it. That's about all you really do. Uh, keep it nice and thin, uh, nice and easy is the best way to do that. Uh, our medium holes. So with something like this, uh, I'm, I'll show you the California method is what it's called. 
And basically, we're not going to use any tapes to go around the outside or to, to do any of the seams. It's going to be the drywall itself, and we're going to use the paper face of the drywall as our tape to go around our seam. So uh, the first one with this is just to square it off a little bit. You know, I'm going to just kind of square that off. So I got most of that, but this is going to be your drywall saw. This actually works pretty good as far as hitting it. And yeah, I got too much already, but, but you come through, cut your corners. Um, you know, inside the wall cavity, I'm going to leave it in there for today. But you take that and just throw that away. Um, so now we have our hole. It's squared off a little bit better. I'm going to get some of the little corners where the paper sticks out. Take that off. Uh, keep it nice and smooth. Now this, I'm going to essentially go a little bit wider than what I am here, and a little bit wider here. I'm going to score this and so now I'm a little bit bigger. So I've got a little gap here. I got a little bit on each side here, which actually is probably more than I need. So on a little bit here too. Okay, so essentially we've got a hole that's squared off. We've got this one that's a little bit bigger. Uh, without having to measure, I can actually go through and I'll try not to block the view too much here, but I'm going to score the back side of the paper just inside, just inside my hole, going this way, and just inside my hole going this way, giving myself a little bit of room, and then I'm going to do the same thing on my side. So just inside. Just inside here. Essentially, what I'm going to do is break this carefully, peel the back of it off. Now essentially I have all the paper that I have and I'm good to sit. So I dry fit it always, usually on the first time, uh, just to make sure I don't have any issues. After that, I'm basically going to take my joint compound. I'm going to get, get and apply a little bit inside the hole on each of these. Uh, the top doesn't usually stay very well, but We're going to get a little bit more liberal on the outside here. So we just want to make sure that we have enough, that we have our paper coverage. And then on the back of here, we're going to stick some on all four of our corners. basically like that, and then we can apply. Yeah, 
then you can use your knife to kind of set it into your corners just so the new drywall that you just put in doesn't get too far set in. And essentially we, if you have a corner like this that I didn't get as much on, don't be afraid, peel that off. Uh, get a little bit extra up there. I guess I got my paper a little bit longer than I need to. Uh, but that's essentially all you have to do for the California patch. Uh, once you get the outside taken care of, let it be. Uh, you start playing with this. The paper on the drywall that we have on here for our outside seam is actually a little bit thinner than our normal paper would be. So you, the more that you start playing with it, it's going to start to wrinkle on you. And that way, when you come back tomorrow when it's dried, you don't have a big wrinkled spot. Um, if you ever do get a wrinkled spot with that, don't be afraid to go through, cut that out, and then put a new piece of tape over top of it. Uh, it's better to cut that out right away before you continue on as opposed to leaving it. Uh, once you start to sand it, it's always going to show back up. So. So yes, that's kind of our small patch, our medium patch. Uh, these are going to be good for anything that would be five, six inches or smaller. Uh, once you start getting bigger, now you're going to want to have a little bit more reinforcement on that. Uh, so that's kind of our, our next step as far as that goes. So I will rotate our little prop here quick. Can you see that one? Good? Okay. So this is going to be a little bit bigger of a hole. Uh, this might be something that you had a plumbing chase in the bathroom that you had to cut open because it was leaky. Uh, something that you had to work in here, and now you want to patch it back up because it's not in a inconspicuous place. You know, it's going to be on the edge of the tub, you know, in the bathroom or something of that sort. So with a larger hole, a couple of things that you're going to want to have is some sort of blocking. Uh, you can use three quarter inch plywood, you could use a one by, you can use two by fours to put back in here. I got a bunch of plywood laying around, so that's usually the one I go to right away. Uh, with these, we are basically going to slide them in, uh, split the difference on the board. That way, you know, essentially you're half and half as far as that goes. And now you can screw those in uh, with, I guess, some of our drill bits here. Not sure if you want to get a zoom in on that. I've got a little bit that actually is for drywall. It is, uh, it sets the depth, and that way you're not sinking the screws too far in. Once you start breaking the paper, then you start having issues once you come to finishing. So these, you can get a simple ones like these for a couple bucks. Uh, you can get some nice ones for you know eight ten dollars just depends on what you're doing uh, otherwise be real careful you know if you're going to use just a regular drill uh, but yeah so this is set that here and that way it automatically stops uh, it will leave just a tiny little dimple for you on the paper and then you way you kind of know that it's set to the proper depth so put one on each side as far as that goes try not to block too much of your view here but there you go now you got your backer can take and if I can the corner here. <laughs> third time, third time's a charm. Yep. So now you can take that and uh, just kind of keep in mind, you know, how much you actually have back out here again. Uh, don't cut your piece so small that you struggle trying to put a screw back into it. So give yourself at least, you know, an inch and a half on each side if you can. Thank you. So I uh, purposely 
left one here just to show you. Uh, once you start, once you start finishing to save you some time, you can actually run your knife across the drywall. And if you hit a screw, you know to sink that one a little bit more. Uh, simple, easy. It's going to save you some time once you actually get to mudding because once you're mudding, you no longer have your drill. Now you got to set everything down, come back through. So if you just go through, run this across uh, your drywall real quick, across your screws, especially when you've got a larger four by eight sheet, you can you know check that up and down. Uh, make sure you didn't miss one in a corner or, or anywhere like that. So obviously this one, I need to go back through and set that one just a touch more. So now we got this bag on. Um, next up is basically going to be uh, tape it. So with this, we're gonna use our paper tape. I guess a couple things you can do. Uh, you can you know, measure it, you can tear it. Uh, to have a nice clean edge on it is, is good. So you can actually use your knife to do that. You know, overlap your corners a little bit. So uh, one trick with the paper is to apply your edges first. and be somewhat liberal with this. Uh, you don't have to have it sticking out really far. Although if you don't have enough, that's where the dry spots on the backside come into play. And when you don't have enough on the backside, your tape's not gonna stick very well. And now you're gonna have a bubble that's gonna appear once it does dry. Uh, likewise, same way, you know, if you get a bubble that applies um, or appears once you go to sand it, Cut that out, put a new piece in. But essentially, we can set that in. Uh, with a smaller area, you know, we're basically setting it into the tape and go from side to side with it. Putting a little bit of pressure on the outside of our knife and kind of pulling it back across through. So clean this up a little bit here. So we got that set in. So we got the top and bottom kind of set in as far as that goes. Uh, once we have those, our finished coat and our second coat, we're actually going to go over top of those. Get that nice and nice and set as far as those go. So uh, obviously eight foot runs, you know, up and down, uh, be liberal with your, with your joint compound. You know, don't be afraid to use a little bit extra as opposed to having a dry spot and having the bubble that appears, you know, the next day when you show up, if you got bubbles all over, you know, it, it gets to be frustrating because you're cutting those out, you're trying to redo it. If you notice one right away, uh, you can actually, you know, you can peel this up and I'm not sure if, if that's going to show very well. But I've got that peeled up. And over here where we didn't have very much, uh, you can see a little bit of a dry area and uh, where it's actually lacking and missing some. Down here, it's nice and consistent and thorough. So you know, this is going to be one area that once you start working with it, you know, play with it, uh, get comfortable, and don't be afraid to use a little bit extra underneath on the first set. So. I guess that's kind of that's kind of it. Yeah. The next we would just do our other two corners there, um, our other two sides, overlap our corner, and you're good to go on this one. Uh, let it dry. Come back tomorrow, uh, or if you're using a quick set, you know, a 20 minute, 45, you know, end of the day, you can come back through, probably sand it down, and put another coat on. You know, get two, three coats on each day if you really want to. So that's kind of the nice thing with having something that dries a little quicker. And then as far as kind of the next items um, are going to be some of our corners. So outside corners, uh, very similar to our normal patch, you know, we're going to apply um, over top. We've got our outside corner. It's got the metal reinforcing inside of it. Uh, one thing here is if you are doing new drywall, the better that you are at squaring and leveling this off and making a nice corner 
the easier it becomes when you actually put your outside corner back on. So uh, take a little bit of time actually installing your drywall. It's going to save you in the long run when you come back to, to do this. So um, essentially with this, you know, we're going to have our outside corner. near as much as I need to um, but just to show you as far as that goes you got your outside corner you're set you know if we had a wall this is a good spot where if I need to and I want to check my level on my wall just to make sure it's not tipping or leaning one way or the other um, good place for the for the level to come in uh, but once we get that done a little bit more back through, level off our areas here. And then we can basically apply on the other side as far as that goes. So uh, pretty simple, pretty easy. Uh, like I said, on the bottom side, same way with these, make sure you have plenty of joint compound on the bottom underneath your tape. That's gonna be the trick, that's gonna be the key for setting any of your corners, any of your tape, it goes. Uh, that's kind of the only, the only difference. Once you have the mesh, you know, obviously it's got the holes all the way through it. So when you do apply, it's going to push its way through and it's going to set up all the way, all the way through and consistent around it. Essentially, that's what you want to do with the tape. You want to get a good consistency around the tape. Uh, it just doesn't have any holes like the mesh does to allow it to seep through. So. So that's basic, a simple, simple, basic outside corner. And then the same way with our inside corners. Once we get to that, we got an inside corner bead that we can use. And that's gonna fit in there nicely as far as that goes. Or like I said before, uh, the tape itself actually comes with a seam in the middle of it. So you can bend and actually use the tape if you don't want to grab any corners. Or if you get short on a corner, um, you can always use your tape as far as that goes. So, so that's going to be a simple, easy way to do that. Uh, likewise, we're going to essentially fill our corner. This horizontal seam I would have done first if we were doing an actual drywall uh, job, and then I would come back to my corner just so I've got that tucked in underneath uh, to try to hit the gauntlet and get everything. Brian, if you're trying to do uh, an inside corner like that, you have a horizontal seam. You have to wait till that horizontal seam is dry before you go do that inside corner, or can you still work with it? You could usually, um, so if you, most of the time, if you go through and you hit all your horizontal and your vertical butt joints, if your room is large enough that you can't get by with one sheet across it, if you work all of those and then come back through, this is going to be set up to the point where you can apply and then go back through with your corners. So uh, if you're trying to work you know, your corner, you're not going to come out part way with this seam anyway. So typically I always work my uh, butt joints, my horizontals at one time, and then I can come back and hit my inside outside corners. Uh, so it's working in kind of a little bit of a flow as far as that goes, uh, makes it easier once you do get uh, different different steps along the way. And just in case people don't know what a butt, butt joint is and a bevel joint is, can you explain that? Actually? Yep, so, and that's where, so when you have two seams and you're hanging um, like an eight foot wall, you buy these, like a four by eight sheet is going to come together, you're gonna to have two seams. So right here, you actually have a gap in between the two seams with, the, with your knife. Uh, they actually bevel just a touch. Um, 
that little one has one on there. I guess I don't have a, any, any quick free pieces, but um, so that's, that's meant to be there for you to fill that. And that's gonna be, that's gonna give you kind of that clearance in between um, your plane up here and your other plane down here. So once you have your tape put on, across here, now we're filling, um, and then you can smooth that out. A side to side, so usually your drywall, you can get up to 12 foot pieces. If you have anything larger than a 12 foot room, you know, say you've got a 16 by 20, you're gonna have a butt joint. That's gonna be where the two seams are gonna come together on the ends. Those are a little bit more, um, more work to kind of get those into place and they take a little bit more practice to get them really good. Uh, you're gonna basically start the same way though as you are with a normal seam. So I'm actually going to, I'll grab a little bit of stuff here and So with our butt joint, we're basically going to start the same as what we normally would have. And we're going to be liberal with, with our drywall joint compound, getting that through there. Um, bring our tape back in. You know, we're basically going to set it, uh, press it back into place. Initial coat kind of put down on. So initial coat is going to be a little bit thinner. You can usually do that with a six inch knife like I have. Once you actually have that first coat done, now that's where your larger 12 inch is going to come back through. So the trick with that is you're actually going to apply pressure on the outside corner and work your way down through as you smooth your, your next coat out. So you're actually going to fill the whole knife, bring that whole thing back out, and then same way on this side. You're gonna have pressure on the outside over here, bringing that down through. So you're gonna fan that butt joint out larger as opposed to just your tapered beveled seam. Where your tapered bevel seam, you know, if you're at that probably six inch interval, you're gonna be able to hide that pretty well your butt joint, you're actually gonna fan that out and you're gonna be more in that 10 to 12 inch range as far as your finish goes. Uh, it's just the seams come together, you still have tape on it and you just wanna fan that out a little bit further uh, once you get to that, that part of it. So, um, the butt joints take a little bit more work, um, a little more, more finesse. Like I said, less is more, you know, start simple, start easy with it and it's less sanding that you have to do once you come back for your second coat. So, um, yeah, same way with that. We've got our inside corner. We can basically set that into place. We can go make sure we're nice and nice and firm in the corner. And then we've got our first coat that we can apply back over top of it. And same way with this. If you, most people are pretty f comfortable using like the six inch or four inch knife to do their finish or initial coat. Uh, they do have an inside corner. So once you have the joint compound applied liberally, you could actually come back up through. And now you can hit both sides of the corner all in one stroke. Uh, this works pretty good. Uh, once you start from the top or your bottom, work your way to the middle you're gonna have little gaps. So once you find the little gaps, you can apply more, you know, start trying to get like one full smooth coat. Uh, that's gonna help kind of keep that corner nice and smooth and nice and crisp with a nice line. So, you know, just a couple of tools that you can use to help with that inside corner. So. As far as that goes, yeah. So those are gonna be, some of the simple, uh, simple repair items, uh, simple repair I types, you know, your small hole, your medium hole, uh, larger hole, 
as far as that goes, you've got an outside, inside corner. That's going to get you through most of your projects that you're going to be looking at, uh, trying to accomplish. Uh, you know, it's only drywall. So just keep that in mind. You know, if you mess up, you sand down a little bit more, you know, you peel your tape off, you do it a couple times, and it's going to take a couple times to get the, the hang of it. You know, start with a couple small ones and then move on to a larger, you know, project. You know, that way you're not trying to finish off your whole basement, you know, the first time you ever go to do something. Um, if you do that, by the time you get to the end, you're probably going to be really good at it because you've got so much repetition finishing off a whole basement, but that's a lot to jump into right away, uh, especially if you're not sure or not comfortable doing something of that sort. So, um, yes, with that, I'm not sure if there's any questions on, on anything. Um, I guess otherwise, If you do have, you know, a smaller tote or a bucket or even a larger one, you know, once you get done at the end of the day, try and smooth that out as much as you can inside up here. Add just a touch of water if you're coming back tomorrow. That's going to keep the top nice and moist. And then another thing that you could do if you might, you know, might be a weekend that you did it and next weekend you're gonna jump back in again, add a little bit of water to the top of that, stick like a you know, plastic uh, convenience store bag, you know, like a Walmart bag on top of it, that's gonna help kind of keep that moisture in there too. Uh, that way you can come to this and you don't have an inch thick of dried out joint compound. Um, so keep track of that, um, simple little trick to help kind of you know, keep the longevity of that, especially if you buy a larger, you know, if you get that four and a half gallon one. Uh, if you're not sure how much you need, the price difference between, you know, the three and a half quart, uh, I think we're maybe five, six bucks on something like that. You go and get like a bag, that's gonna be like seven, eight bucks. And then the larger four and a half, you're, probably in that um, 12, 10, 12, $14 range. So, you know, not much of a price difference between all of those. Oh, we're just, we just, yep, we just <laughs> not moving around enough, <laughs> lost our flights. So, so just simple things like that. Um, same way with drywall, you know, store it in a dry, cool place. If you can't get to it right away, you know, if you got all the materials, don't leave them in the garage where you got high moisture, especially if it's not a moisture related uh, or you're not intending to put it in the garage. So, you know, any, any of our hot, humid summer days, you know, if you're doing a project, just be mindful of where you keep it. It's going to help the longevity of your products. So, Brian, if the drywall starts to get too, or if the, the joint compound starts to get too, too dry, like in your mud tray or in your bucket when you start or something like that, what kind of signs are you looking for to know that it's too dry and what will happen when you try to apply it um so yeah so if i if i did a if i did like my 20 minute and i mixed it it's going to start to it's going to start to smear um real slow and more clumpy so if you get any clumps that start to come into it especially off of here you know, initially, if you get clumps, and basically what it's going to do is one you smear and you take your tape or your knife across it, uh, you're actually going to pick up a dry clump and it's actually going to leave a line that's going to come across like that. So once you pull your knife across and you get a big chunk that comes like that, you know you have a dry clump that's in there. Get rid of it. Uh, like I said, these aren't very expensive. You know, if you're doing a small project, you know, Keep it, uh, it should be nice and silky smooth. You know, that's going to be the consistency that you want on your joint compound. Uh, it should apply nice and easy. So, we do have a question about something else. Um, wondering about bathroom towel racks. What type of fastener would you recommend uh, to put in drywall? Or, you know, if you don't have the stuff, you're willing to use an anchor. Uh, yeah, so there are, there are multiple anchors that you can use as far as that goes uh, some of them you're actually going to drill a hole into your drywall 
and they have like a butterfly clip that's going to stick through and then it expands on the back side as you tighten down the uh, the nut those work really well if it if you're doing any sort of bathroom reno just on a side note with that and you know you might put a towel rack here or in the future you want a grab bar install blocking on the back side of these like a like a two by 10, two by 12. And now you know, okay, this entire area, I have my blocking already back here. And that's if you're gonna like completely gut and, and redo something. Uh, it's way easier to add that blocking in, take a picture of it, you know, hold up a tape measure from a corner. That way you know where it starts and stops. That way three years from now, when you wanna put that grab bar in or that uh, towel rack, you remember where it was exactly. So a couple little quick measurements, take them with your phone. Uh, you can always scan back through and, and check and see where those are. Uh, but the ones that have the butterfly clips on the back that expand out, uh, those work really nice. Uh, some of the other ones that are like the white plastic ones that you can actually screw into the wall and then put another screw into those. Those work, although just be mindful, sometimes that white plastic insert that you put in first does not sink flush all the time. If it does not, it may stick out just that, you know, a couple little millimeters. Some people, not a big deal. Uh, if it's got a little cover plate, you're going to hide that, so not, not an issue there. Uh, but just keep in mind of that. Some of those other butterfly ones you talked about, they actually have, drill it in and then they have like a little plastic pin that you push in and flare it out the back. And then you put the screw in and actually just pressure holds it in. Right? Yep, yep. Uh, another question that someone was wondering about, they had a bunch of drywall that's been sold in their garage for a while. Should they toss it? Should they use it? Has it been um, exposed to the weather? I guess if you're going to know, a lot of times if it's been sitting in your garage for a while and you do have moisture in there, if you go to look at it, um, the drywall itself sitting in the garage, if it was up, right, it might actually be starting to curl like this, where it's kind of sagging a little bit. If you have that, you're probably going to have more issues trying to get that set and straight, uh, first of all. Second, you have a lot of moisture that's going to be obtained in there. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> trying to conserve energy. Yeah. Project yeah. If we don't, if we don't move enough, we, we lose our lights. <laughs> there they go. Now we're back. <laughs> um, so yeah, if, if you have small projects, you know, small little repairs, you could probably look through the drywall that you did have sitting in the garage. Uh, there might be some areas that, yes, you know, if you've got a small little four by four that you need to cut a chunk out, sure, you can keep that, uh, use it, you know, sparingly. As far as, you know, if it's been sitting in there for three years and you got moisture and it's starting to sag on you, you're, you're probably going to be in more trouble in the long run trying to reinstall that if you're going to finish off your basement with it. Uh, so I guess kind of weigh your cost benefits um, and kind of check and see as far as that goes. But, but that's, that's one thing that you, you know, I want to say a judgment call, you know, on site with that, uh, but be, be cautious of what you do with it. Uh, the other thing that you can do, you know, if you have an area, um, I'll try and see if I can pull. If you get large areas, let's say that when you're actually doing your repair um, and you're missing your tape or your paper and you just have like a brown exposure or the back of it for some reason, you know, it got stalled and backwards on a small repair, you can actually use, um, and not trying to name drop or anything of that sort, but Kills makes a really good oil-based uh, spray paint or spray primer that you can put on that first. So if you spray that oil-based primer, it's going to set up quickly. It's going to give a nice coverage area for the brown part or the back of the drywall that got installed. 
And now once you install your joint compound, your joint compound will adhere to that oil-based primer. So that's another thing that you can do as well. Yeah. Yeah, that that would be something. Yeah, if you if you had the drywall sitting around, you didn't have any tape. You know, that's a simple simple way to do that. Any holes that are bigger than the small, you can fix it just like the large one. You can put a a backer on there. Uh, of any sort, you know, make that hole a little bit bigger and give yourself, you know, plywood or a one by on the backside. Uh, you could do that for any hole that you have. Uh, that's going to give you the more consistent basis. But for a simple, quick little patch, you know, that that works pretty pretty slick. So. One last thing. Brian was installation tips and how should people like they're starting a new room. How would you install yep. So if you're if you're starting a new room, you get to that part, uh, and you're going to tackle a room. Uh, keep it in mind your stud spacing. Your walls are going to most likely be 16 on center. Your ceilings are your, you know, newer housing um, stock. They're probably going to be 24 on center. So be mindful of that. If you have 24 on center ceilings, make sure you get 5 8 drywall. It helps cover the span of when you have your fasteners installed with your screws and nails and you're not going to get sagging because it's going to be too thin of a material. Uh, start with your ceilings and then work your upper drywall section, you know, push that up tight and then you can do your bottom section. Uh, most of the time if you are framing up a wall and you have to cut a rip piece, the bottom is the easiest to do that with. And now you don't have to be, you know, 100% perfect. Uh, if you are in a basement, your basement is probably going to have some ups and downs anyway. And now you don't have to cut it 100% tight to the uh, floor. You want to give a little bit of a room at the bottom anyway. Uh, you put any sort of like base on it and you're going to cover up that little bit of gap that you do have. So, so the easiest thing there is start at your ceilings, do your upper piece, do your bottom piece. That's the one that you're going to have to cut. And then the convenience of that is your horizontal line is going to be, you know, right at your easy working level as far as that goes. If you do have a wall that is larger, say you've got a 10 foot wall, a lot of the contractors, as far as convenience goes, they'll actually put the top piece in, they'll cut their ripped piece, and then they'll put their bottom piece in. Now they don't have to bend over to do the seam. They've got both seams right in the middle. And they can make basically one big butt joint out of it where they're working at an area that's nice and easy. Uh, they don't have to bend. They don't have to stand on stilts. So they put that big seam right in the middle of it. So that's another idea or trick that you can use. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Well, yeah, I guess. Uh, Brian, Brian and Jason, thank you so much. That was really thing. great. Um, I guess we want to give a sponsor shout out to uh, MG&E and uh, New Glarus Brewing. I guess yeah. if you guys are around in New Glarus this weekend, I know they've got their Oktoberfest going on. So I'm sure there'll be plenty of sponsor beers available for people to, to try. So yeah. um, otherwise, thanks. And I guess contact you know your librarian if you have any other further questions for a follow up. So, thanks, thanks so much, guys. Projectonewi.org. Uh, all of our information is there. If we can help you with one of our programs, or if you're interested in other resources, um, that, that's why we're here. So, Projectonewi.org. Reach out to us. Okay. Uh, I don't see any more questions. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Have a great night. Have a great. Thank you. Thank yeah. Thanks everyone for coming. I appreciate it. On behalf of the New Library. Bye-bye.